The Rip City Drive. I want to run these numbers by you. Jonathan Smith doing a heck of a job. Uh, Nick Dash will compile this list. Take a listen to this since he took over. Not offense, which is his side of the ball, but look at what he's done defensively with the program and how good of a job Smith has done. Scoring defense. In 2018, when he took over, the Beavers were number 129th nationally at 45.7. <laughs> now, this year in 2022, they're number 27 at 20.3 points per game. Total defense in 2018, the Beavers were number 129 nationally, 536 yards a game. Now, they're 25th at 330 yards a game. Rushing defense, when he took over, they were number 129 in the nation at 281 yards a game. Now, they're 19th at 111 yards per game. Defensive passing efficiency rating. In 2018, they were number 124 at 159.8. Now they're eighth nationally at 109.67. Every single major category defensively, they've had dramatic improvement from 2018 up until now. Mm -hmm. And that's not even his side of the ball. And he's also the one that had the... The understanding that I needed to make a change last year. They went with Coach Bray, and he took the defense to a different level. For I mean, sure. that, that is terrific for a place like Oregon State to have that type of defensive improvement in such a short period of time. Because when he took over, Gary Anderson had run the program into the ground. I'm just, yeah. I didn't know those numbers exactly. So when you read it, you're like, gosh, he's getting it done. Here's the thing, Chad. That speaks well for his defensive coordinator. It also speaks well for their recruiting. Somebody has recruited pretty good players. You don't get to those rankings across the board like that unless you have pretty good players on the defensive side of the ball. That speaks to the coordinator again, and it speaks to Jonathan Smith for what he's built into that program. And again, I think he's a hell of a coach. I, I think I, I have since day one. He's really a good coach. There's no doubt. He, I think he gets every inch out of that team that he needs to get or that he could get. Well, one of the keys to the development of the program has been the recruiting and and getting more depth. So Mm -hmm. when you lose your top line guys, you got guys who can step in this past game against Arizona State, Dwight. They had multiple guys out. Six starters or regulars were sidelined against Arizona State. Jack Coletto was out. Jaden Grant, Alex Austin, Deshaun Fenwick, Anthony Gold. And then what they did is they went out and Skylar Thomas, who is a reserve corner, he had eight tackles in the game. Ryan Cooper Jr., uh, saw his role increased. He's played all over in the secondary. He stepped up and was a big contributor against ASU. Tanner Miller stepped in and played left guard. He was a third stringer. He got the start. Coach Smith was very impressed with his performance. And then Josiah Irish, who stepped in for gold, who's been their key return guy, yeah. did a heck of a job in the return game. So even when some of their top line guys are out, because he's you know, built this program up from the ground level. Now they've got guys who can step in. And that's the key in college football is that when injuries hit, the attrition comes. Do you have guys who can step in and make plays to help you win games? They yeah. do now. And there's a difference, too, in the way you coach them, Chad. Some of these guys coach their starters to death, but they don't coach the guys behind them as well as they coach the starters. It's just an emphasis they place on them. I've seen it for years. These guys obviously coach the whole roster, or those guys would not be able to step in. When you talk about an offensive lineman coming in to a veteran offensive line and being able to fill in, that's no accident. He's talented, yeah, but he's been practicing with those guys a lot. He, they've done a great job of coaching him up to get him to be able to play. All right, so here, I want your take on this. You know, one of the keys, I think, for Oregon State over the last couple of years, and the reason why they've made those dramatic improvements has been the remarkable ability of Scott Barnes and Jonathan Smith to keep his assistants on staff. Mm-hmm. The continuity. Yeah. The problem with Nick Saban and some of these top-line programs, they have a big year or two years, and then other teams come in and pluck their coaches away. And if you look at uh, Jonathan Smith's staff right now, They've got a number of different guys. You've got Brian Lindgren, the offensive coordinator, and Trent Bray, who's done a great job with the defense. You've got Jim McCalzick, who's on the offensive line. He's well-respected. A.J. Stewart at running back. And Brian Wozniak with the tight ends and Blue Adams in the secondary. And the secondary has been terrific. I don't think that after this season that he's going to be able to keep it intact. And I guess if other teams want your staff, that means you're doing the right thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I think this year... 
more than any other year, Chad, they've caught other people's eye. They are being noticed. And, and those assistants who, you know, you can say how great they are, but when you coach a team that finishes up six and six or, you know, seven and five or whatever, they're not going to get the notice that this team's going to get for the record it has compiled. Yeah. Everybody knows they're not out there getting five-star athletes. That That's a big deal when you can coach guys up like that. I agree. Um, speaking of guys who have been coached up, for the second straight year, the Beavs are finishing out the year with a quarterback that did not start the season. Yeah. Um, ben Goldbranson's going to be the quarterback the rest of the way, and I would agree with that. He's he's played long enough. He's getting better, but he looks like a different guy this past Saturday than the guy that stepped in against Utah. What are your thoughts on the way that Smith has been able to bring the offense together with a guy that may be limited in some of the things that they want to do? Well, again, you coach your players to do what they do best. And I think in this case, they've been able to figure out what passes he throws the best what plays work best for him, how they can make best use of his skills, and they're doing it. I think they've tailored what they're doing around him, which isn't necessarily easy when you open the season with an entirely different quarter. All right, one player that's jumped out at me. How about Damian Martinez, the running back? Oh, he is a youngster, and check this out right now, averaging 6.1 yards a carry. And he's already got five 100-yard rushing games. First player to do that since Steven Jackson. What do you think about this guy? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. He's not a Steven Jackson size-wise. That's for sure. He's not even close. He's a smaller running back. Quick, fast, but more quick than fast, and really tough. If he gets it done, he needs 123 yards against Oregon. <clears throat> He would join Ken Simonton, Jaquiz Rogers, and Jamar Jefferson to accomplish that feat, reach 1,000 uh, as a freshman. I just think he's been impressive because going into the year, I thought, okay, Fenwick, this is going to be the guy, the power, the bruiser. He's going to be the one to carry the, the lion's share of uh, the load, and that hasn't been the case. It's been Martinez. We didn't even know at the start of the year who their number one running back was going to be. Remember, Chad? They have a crowded running back room. Yeah. They have good running backs. And he has emerged. He's earned what he's gotten. And I would guess those yards have come in many fewer carries than those other guys on that list that you mentioned.